bulgar incident is an horrific act of mobocracy yes i repeat horrific act of mobocracy it's high time for us for india to put an end to macabre series of mob lynchings but who is responsible because of the people like arnab goswami whose ubiquitous attitude of nefariously communalizing every mob lynching irrespective of whether a muslim is involved or not involved people common men get confused who is responsible whom to be blamed for this macabre series of mob lynchings july 17 2018 including the date i'm telling july 17 2018 supreme court of india has urged not ordered requested a parliament to consider passing a bill separately for for mob lynchings to combat this hate crime to combat this mob lynchings something like anti mob lynching law but government kept on ignoring it can you imagine in july 2018 out of 545 member of parliaments in in lok sabha 545 but yes existing is 542 because three are vacant in the 303 member of parliamentarians members of parliament belong to bharatiya janata party all of them if they sit for half an hour and have a simple discussion by the end of 2018 we must have or we would have had an anti mob lynching law in india but see the negligence it is the government the existing government to be blamed for the whimsical attitude towards this type of lynching cases the macabre series of lynchings would have come to end at least if this bill would have passed by 2018 itself let me give a cut of the mob lynchings available types of mob lynchings as well as what are the sections available at this point of time if you observe the type of lynchings happening in india it is either out of cow whistling violence or a mistaken identity of thief or a mistaken identity relating to child abduction or a mistaken identity related to organ harvesting all of them are basically out of this fake whatsapp messages and section 153a of ipc can't take care of all of them you can clearly see here section 153 of ipc is not at all centric towards the type of lynchings happening now it just says promoting enmity between different groups and ground of religion race place of birth residence language etc and doing acts prejudicial to maintenance of harmony and even the offenses are also classified just into two categories promoting enmity between classes and promoting enmity between classes in place of worship etc well there are a few other sections where a mob lynching accused can be booked for section 302 of ipc punishment for murder Section three zero four of IPC, punishment for culpable homicide not amounting to murder. Section three zero seven of IPC, attempt to murder. Section three twenty three of IPC, punishment for voluntarily causing hurt. Section three twenty five of the IPC, punishment for voluntarily causing grievous hurt. Section one twenty B. punishment for criminal conspiracy you must be well aware of indrani mukherji peter mukherji section 143 of ipc unlawful assembly punishment section 147 of ipc it is punishment for rioting all the types of riots are basically booked under this section 147 and section 149 of the ipc well section 34 of the ipc both of them almost go with the same thing even if you're a member of uh, the team you still would be punished first to introduce is the state of manipur followed by the state of west bengal and followed by the state of rajasthan manipur protection from mob violence bill 2018 has definitely set a benchmark to all the other states of india including to the other union territories available in india in fact it has actually set a benchmark to the whole country they've got i believe as per the things i believe that 
They were got inspired from 1918 Dyer Mob Lynching Act, as well known in the United States of America. They have followed a little bit of guidelines, even guided by the Supreme Court of India, like having a nodal officer, particular nodal officer, who is in charge of all these lynchings. And their model, if you observe, they have first given the responsibility the blame should be by the police officer who was in charge of that, who visited the place, who was a responsible person, who was supposed to go there, who have not visited the place, who have not taken a proper action. The police officers involved in this would be punished. First time, something like this. That's why I said they have set a benchmark. The police officers involved in this must be punished. If you observe the mob lynching case of uh, Manipur, a Muslim boy, it is police officers are over there, but they could not do anything. But in reverse, if you observe the case, the mob lynching case of Karnataka, a techie, Google techie, a mistaken identity of, of uh, you know, a child kidnapper, police were requesting the lynchers, you know, the mob, they're requesting the mob like this, literally, kindly, I request you, I beg you, please stop this. They are not the people, they're software engineers. So you can't, you can't just generalize that every police officer, officer is like that. But this case who have not acted upon must be punished. In fact, usually there is a procedure. If you're booking a police officer, the respective state government's permission is required. But as per this act, it's mentioned that the police, the state government's permission is also not required. If a police officer's negligence is involved in stopping the mob lynching. Highly appreciated. And they also have a, in the act, they also said that separate protection should be given to the victims as well as the witnesses, right? The witnesses, if someone has to go until the whole stuff is done, whole episode has been sorted out, a protection must be given not only to the victim, but also to the witnesses, especially in case of the mob lynching things. Last but by no means least, compensation. They've got an effusive models of compensation, complemented by the rehab centers. Can you imagine if someone, something, a mob lynching has happened against me? I would have been depressed, as well as you know, I entered the penury with with no money, and in the for depression, obviously, I need a rehab and rehabilitation center. So they have actually taken care of all the anger. That's what I said. The Manipur model of combating the violence, mob violence, must be highly appreciated. Now, it's if I wind up my thing, please. My very simple, lucid, and forthright request is the moment we come out of this pandemic, the moment we are out of this pandemic, the moment the parliamentary sessions are on, our parliamentarians must think about this. We must have already 1918 bill is there, dire anti lynching bill is there. Already the, the state of Manipur has actually kept a benchmark. They have shown everything. Rest is over to the wisdom of the parliamentarians. Rest is over to the wisdom of the majoritarians sitting in the parliament. How fast to pass the bill pertaining to the anti-lynchings. Nandri Wanakam.